Hi, it's Chris Vine here. We've had a fantastic day uh, with the railway. Uh, the engines run many miles this afternoon. And so now it's time to clean up all the paintwork, uh, hoover out the fire and uh, to sweep the tubes and put it to bed. So I've got uh, some uh, Mr Sheen here, which is my favourite thing for cleaning the engine with. And a, a little thing is, uh, I bought lots of dusters recently, but the trick is uh, to fold the dusters up and then you can keep using fresh bits of duster. So what I'm going to do, uh, we've got to get all the muck off the, off the boiler and there's, there's engine oil and soot uh, and everything. It's quite a gloopy abrasive mix. So what I'm going to do is just put a little tiny bit of uh, Mr Sheen on, on the, 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 the duster, on one bit there. And all I'm going to do is just very gently go along the boiler. And I'm not really trying to polish it at all. I'm just trying to take off the worst of the gritty stuff off the paint. Uh, other, uh, other videos you might have picked up that it took me six years to make Bongo, another uh, two to paint, paint the engine. So I try to look after the paint quite carefully. So I've not really done very much. All I've done is to pull off the worst of the uh, muck. So now we just get to another piece and a little bit more uh, of this. And this time we can just work a little bit more on the paint because uh, some of the grit has come off now. It's a very mucky thing, a steam engine, because you have a mixture of uh, coal dust, ash, uh, gloopy oil, and everything else, rust off the rails too. And so what I do is I do the, I do the nicest, brightest bits of paint first, and then you work to the less good bits. So that I can just quickly run over the cab there with that bit. So now if I turn it over, we can have another fresh piece of duster. Because the great thing is you don't really want to rub all the dirt into the nice uh, gloss paint. So now there's really no grit on the boiler at all. It's just a little bit of oil. Um, so we can do that a little bit more now. Uh, right, now we're going to do another clean piece of duster and we now do the boiler properly. We'll polish it up nicely. Uh, one thing, uh, you might wonder why I don't use car polish. Um, I use a, just a furniture polish. Car polish is great at polishing paint. The problem is it's got an abrasive in it, which the whole idea is it takes the surface off the paint and polishes it up. The problem is that if you uh, polish a model with car paint, the abrasive bits get stuck on all the little rough edges. Cars don't really have rough edges because the edges of panels all go around a nice little curve. But if you use car car polish on this engine, although it will leave a lovely finish with the sort of poly, um, what's the word, a polymer finish on the outside. The problem is all the little bits of abrasive get stuck in, in, in all these little angles and you end up with little white lines everywhere. So we're just using a simple furniture polish. So now I've got all the, all the dust off, all the grit from the, from the coal. Now I can actually polish it up a bit. And we can do that with a clean piece of duster. All right, that bit there. In a moment, it will look like it's just come out of the paint booth. That's the plan anyway. And this bit's now coming up nicely. I think we might just turn that over once more. Right. Uh, next bit to do is to have a look at the cylinders here because they get a bit mucky as well. And again, another fresh piece of duster. And I find it better to put the, put the polish on the duster rather than spraying it on the end. You don't get quite so much on if you don't. So that's shone up the cylinder covers nicely. Let's have a little go now at the motion work and the wheels, the spokes of the wheels. So this is an old duster that's worked quite hard. So I'm just going to go up, take some of the oil off all the motion work because it does get covered in oil after a bit. And a bits of uh, rust, Oops, got caught on a split pin. A bits of rust off the rail spatter the engine everywhere. So just take most of the oil off the motion, get it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, connecting rod. Valve eccentric rod. Return crank, coupling rods, uh, can't quite get to all of that one. We move the engine uh, back just a fraction to get to that coupling rod. There we are, we can get to most of that now. Right, so that's done that. And then 
it takes quite a little while to clean the wheels, but essentially I just go around with a finger like that and clean around all the spokes. Do that. That's done most of that. It's amazing what comes off just the spokes of one wheel. And just do the hub there. And then we've got to get all the way around the, um, the, the outside part of the wheel so I can just roll the engine along and give it a little clean like that. That looks better. So uh, we've cleaned up most of the motion work now. Uh, clean up the expansion link, clean up around right there, clean up that as well. That's the lifting link there. That looks a bit better than it did. Um, one tiny thing to do, which I forgot, let's take the footrest off. That can go. And that can go up there. And then there's the seat. The seat just sits on the back of the tender. Now it looks like an engine, uh, not, a, not one for driving. And then we'll do the tender sides very gently. The tender sides don't ever really get dirty, but we'll just do it very gently. Uh, I don't want to uh, ever wear the lining out or wear through the, the lettering. That would be a lot of work to replace that. So again, we just put the tiniest bit of on that, and on that. So we've got the engine nicely cleaned up now. The next thing to do is to get rid of the fire from the firebox. So I've got Granny's old vacuum cleaner for that. And what we'll do is we'll protect the tender paintwork by putting an old towel on it. And we'll push it forward so I can reach. Put that to there. Here is Granny's old hoover. It must be 60 years old at least, I should think. I've got a little tool here that I just use to push the fire where the hoover can reach it. So uh, let's get on and hoover out the fire. and reach in there. Ash, soot, bits of unburnt coal. Something's got jammed in the hoover. Come on. That's it, that's going again. There is a method of dropping the grate to drop the fire out. The problem with that is that the dust just goes everywhere and I'd like to try and keep all the bearings free of dust and ash and grit. Now what I've got to do is I've got most of, the, most of the fire that I can reach out, so I can use this piece here now to push, push the remains of the fire forward where I can get it with the, with the, with the, with the sucker. I'm going to do that. So that shoves some of the fire forwards, the last little bits, so I can get a few last bits like that. Right. That is the firebox empty. And now I can reach up into the ash pan itself. So here we are, just with the tube going into the ash pan, as you can hear it, sucking all the old ash out. If you don't hoover out the ash pan, the problem is it can fill up with ash if you have several steam ups and don't clean it out. The ash pan can fill up with ash and then the air can't get through to the fire so it doesn't burn properly. And also, if the air doesn't get through in sufficient quantities, the, the, the fire bars, the grate that the fire rests on, will overheat and maybe melt. So it's much better to clean out the ash pan each time. So the last bit to do really today is to uh, clean out the smoke box, all the ash that ends up in there, and to sweep the tubes because they get soot inside them and then that stops the heat getting from the, 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 the hot gases and the flames into the boiler to make the steam. So what we have to do first of all is to open the smoke box door. So that loosens it, that's a screw thread, and then we turn that uh, thing half a turn, sorry, a quarter of a turn, and then we can open the smoke box and you can see there's a huge amount of ash in there. Um, bits and pieces all over the place. So this bar lifts out, let's do that and get that out of the way so we can get in there. That lifts out of the way there. So in here now you can see all the ash from the running, the stuff that hasn't gone up the chimney, uh, and you can see the tubes further in, and so I'm going to sweep the tubes off. But the first thing I'm going to do is just suck all the, all the uh, ash out of here, because I was just make a mess and drop it everywhere. See, it's even, the ash was starting to block that bottom row of tubes there. So if you keep running an engine for too long without cleaning all the smoke box out, then you end up with a, it doesn't make steam so effectively. Yeah. Right, so now what I need to do, I'll leave that uh, running in there because it keeps it clean. So I'm now going to try and sweep all these tubes. Normally I'd sit here, but I think you won't be able to see what I'm doing there. So this is a, it's like a bottle brush. And so that's going to go up each tube in turn, all the way up. at the back, 
and you'll see a little puff of muck comes out with it. Do the next one. Oops. I've only got the hoover in there because it stops the muck going everywhere. So that's now swept all the tubes. I'll just do a last little scoop round in there just to take any of the last muck out, not that it matters much. Do that, a little bit under there. Right, put the little bar back in. That goes back in there. Then this little is called the dart. That goes back through the slot, and then when I turn the little lever on the outside, the handle, that turns it so that we can tighten it up. So that goes back through that slot, like that. Turn it to get it across the bars, and then tighten up that. And that has now pulled, so that has now pulled the smoke box door tight against the smoke box so that uh, any vacuum that's made in there by the exhaust going up the chimney uh, doesn't leak air in there, it pulls the fire through the boiler. So we've uh, totally cleaned up Bongo now, uh, the paintwork's all done very carefully, we've hoovered out the fire, we've swept the tubes and now it's simply time to put the engine to bed. So uh, into the tunnel, runs quite freely on its bearings, not a ball bearing in sight. In she goes. Then I've got a dehumidifier here. All engines, however well made, they are drip water. So there's a dehumidifier to stop things from going rusty. And then there's a little pin here to stop that falling on the engine. Now we can shut the cat flap. So that's the end of a good day's steam. Uh, thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now. Bye bye.